All right, so yes, we're back, and I got another haircut, okay? Because just like my videos, I'm not satisfied with the first cut, so I had to make another one. And besides the fact that you guys are telling me on Twitter I need to be playing in the new G.I. Jane 2 movie that's not happening, or that people are playing tic-tac-toe on my f***ing forehead, it's not stopping me from rocking the buzz cut, so you guys gotta get used to it. But someone that probably couldn't rock the buzz cut because the hairline would fall back like daylight savings time is the subject of our video today, talking, of course, about the bouncing balding bro, Jake Pauler himself. So Jake's back in August. He talked about it on his Instagram, on his Twitter, and there's two things that caught my eye. One, he dropped some new training footage, and it's not a ton of new stuff, but there's one little thing that previously they have tried to hide about Jake's game for a long time, and I guess now they're just saying, f*** it. And then we're going to talk about the biggest thing that really no one knows, but I might have a lead on, and that is, who's Jake's next opponent? But before we do, guys, just make sure you hit that sub button here at The Way Concept. A ton of great content coming down the line. I can't say too much yet, but just know The Way Concept is evolving in multiple ways. Jake, my brother in baldness, Paul, comes back in August. Who's he fighting and what's he looking like? The breakdown... Let's go. All right, first off, let's take a look at Jake back in the training room. Uh, I already see my girl Amanda Serrano looking nice. I don't even got to push play, but I will. Oh my goodness, take my heart away, girl. That's her reaching for my neck because she's basically got me by the throat right now. <laughs> I like this jab here from Jake, right? We get on to Logan for holding his hands low, right? Low hands, Logan, but... Jake has shown an ability to protect himself with his hands up. He knows how to fight with his hands up. So doing this and adding now variabilities to what he does is something I like. What you see him do is aiming his jab, right? Boom. Boom. Left side of the head. See that? That's not a jab just to the face. They're working on the accuracy of his jab and obviously the power of that jab. Hold on to that word. You see it. Targets the left side of the head. Nice shot. Boom. Targets the lead eye. Lennox Lewis used to do this all the time. He would pop his jab from the hip and he would target that lead eye because watch what happens. Boom. That's a nice jab. And obviously it's going to do damage. But this eye can still see this right hand. My man here can still slip outside the right hand or roll under or whatever he needs to do to avoid this shot. But when he throws this other one, boom. Now we're simulating here, but look what shields this right hand. Right to the lead eye, that right hand is coming right here with that jab already shielding it. Boom, big right hand behind it. This is why I said it's Lennox Lewis esque, not because Jake is as good as the former heavyweight king champion. Okay, relax, that's not what I'm saying. Because he's popping that jab from his hip, already knowing how to do so in a normal orthodox stance, he's adding on little wrinkles to his game. This isn't a regular jab, right? Look at that push off that back leg. Boom, into range, punching through that pad. And this is why I say Jake is starting to lean into one of his biggest strengths. And if you guys aren't catching on, I'm talking about his power. Jake is going to have to have a calling card that makes up for some of the deficiencies he lacks as a boxer. And now that we've seen that Jake has devastating power time and time again, I think the camp, especially with Danny Smith now being introduced there, they're going to lean into Jake's power. And I have a feeling that these messages Jake's been sending my jabs like a right hand, you see him in the weight room bench pressing getting his chest and shoulders bigger just my opinion but i think the more that we see of jake and the more that he starts to have higher and higher level opponents we're going to see his volume punching come down and if they're starting to tailor his style for that big time power that he does naturally have i can't say they're wrong for doing it maybe anyone who's been talking jake man listen i know you don't want to get the buzz cut because it might not look as fresh as mine but it's time to come on home dude it, it's time what is this bro it looks like they scooped up all the remaining hair laying on the floor at the barber shop and just dropped it on his head and was like okay there there's your haircut <laughs> and this is what i wanted to get to right this very exaggerated stuff that I saw on his Instagram. Again, even though this jab is more telegraphed than a message sent through Morse code in the 1800s, that's not something you're going to see him do a ton. What they're doing here is accentuating his power. The thing I keep telling you guys is what they are leaning into. Jake's biggest strength, possibly weakness, if you see sh like this a lot, then yeah, that's a massive weakness that people are going to exploit. But this is not something you're going to see him do every time he throws a jab. They're working on that big power jab right? He already understands how to throw that jab. Now we're just adding elements to it. So this is why it's impressive to me. Boom. And again, it's not thrown as a bad overthrown jab, right? The weight isn't coming over the toes. He keeps that chin tucked behind his shoulder. That That's nice. It's a decent jab. Ultimately, that's the shot they want to show you, right? The jab, it's going to hurt you, 
And again, you throw it to that lead eye to cover, boom, that big shot behind it. So sure, yeah, this is somewhat telegraphed, but I even like this little exchange he puts right here. Look at the balance. Even when he kind of gets off balance here with his back leg, as he's throwing this uppercut, he shifts it forward, boom, plants it in the ground, and you already know what's coming next. Hook, boom, right hand behind it. Gets under, double jabs out. Fair play, man. That's not terrible at all. They are training him to become a tank, in my opinion, and I think that's probably, again, for the longevity of what he's going to have to do in this boxing scene, it's probably the right move. At a certain point, he's going to run into a guy that's been doing this for 20 plus years and skill for skill is just going to be better. But the ace up his sleeve, or in this case, probably tattooed on his fucking body, is the fact that Jake has big time power. So I think that's what they're doing, but... Does that give us any idea on a possible opponent? Probably only two that really come to mind for me. Number one is the obvious choice, Tommy Fury. This fight makes the most sense. Jake wants to fight a boxer, Tommy is a boxer. They're around the same age, they're around the same experience level. People would, could go back and forth on who's more skilled or how that fight goes, 50-50. I mean, sh we were two weeks away from that fight actually happening. It just makes a lot of sense to go that route for Jake outside of one big glaring issue, and that is Jake's ability to sell pay-per-views without someone that's proven to be able to sell pay-per-view. I'm not saying Jake can't sell. The guy can sell. He is a draw, but Jake and his team obviously think Tommy isn't. And just to double down on it, I've heard both Jake and BJ Flores in the last couple of weeks basically say, nah, we're not fighting him. Now, I know we're limited for time, so we'll, we'll dig right into it. What was your immediate reaction when Tommy Fury withdrew from the original um, scheduled fight? Man, I, I was upset, you know. I really wanted to knock this kid out and make him pay for the things that he had said, but I wasn't surprised. Can that fight be resurrected in the future? No, absolutely not. You know, really, Tommy's neither here nor there. Like, Tommy's the least of our worries. He was only an opponent uh, for the last fight, and now we've moved on, and I don't think Tommy's in the discussion anymore. And even Jake and BJ Flores saying we'll never fight Tommy almost makes me think they're going to fight Tommy and are trying to kind of dissuade people from thinking about it until they have a formal announcement ready because, well, that's exactly what happened the first time these two were booked to fight. So never say never on that one because I just, I think it makes the most sense, but let's just put it to the side for a second and discuss some other options. I've heard the name Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. float around. Again, that was something that Jake had discussed way back after his last fight. I don't see that fight happening because Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is currently in rehab for what I can only presume to be some sort of substance abuse issues. I don't know, so I'm not going to speak too much more on it. But for him to be in recovery and directly come out of it to a fight camp and go into a fight, I don't know that Jake would start booking his event or say, I have a fight in August, knowing good and well Julio is in recovery and doesn't know when he's coming out of it. And I've heard some other people say stuff like, oh, give me KSI in August. Again, that's not going to happen, guys. I don't see why it would happen without KSI taking another fight on his end to get prepared for it. Because if KSI takes that Jake fight for his return fight after being off for two years, he will lose. It's not going to go well. So to act like KSI is going to be fighting Jake in August, and that's the event, I think is a bit unrealistic. And then you have the MMA guys, Jorge Masvidal, Nate Diaz, Kamaru Usman, Conor McGregor, the same names we keep going through. I'm telling you guys, it's not going to happen until they get out of a UFC contract. Dana is not doing business with those guys over in boxing. He's just not going to do it. And I know Nate has been saying, UFC, let me out of my contract. Let me out of my... They're not going to do that either. The UFC is very smart with who they let go and where they let them go to. The UFC would definitely want a cut of anything Nate's involved in because he is a pay-per-view draw. So I... <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of it. I mean, I don't know. I can only speculate. I personally want to lean toward Tommy Fury because it makes the most sense and Jake wins that fight. Then he's going to really be cooking with grease because you can't say he didn't beat a boxer then. And if you guys remember back, BJ Flores did say they weren't just going to be fighting MMA guys. They wanted to move back and forth. So I think that's where we leave it. Jake, for what I can kind of read there, looking to really beef up, become a power puncher, really put bad intentions behind each shot, make each shot have a purpose, maybe cutting down on his volume a bit and lean leaning in to that big time power. But the biggest question, and this is where we're gonna leave off today, is that a big change in Jake's style for the foreseeable future, or is it a change in strategy for a specific opponent? I have about as much hair left as I have answers to those questions. In other words, basically zero. So who is he fighting? And are we seeing the youngest Paul brother lean into becoming a big power puncher? Guess we'll find out.